Last but not least, today we have a very nice talk here to present to you. His name is Giles Greenway, and he worked in some fields not really related to music up till now, but he will show us what, how you can yeah, make the continuous discrete and the discrete continuous. So, <laughs> please um, welcome Jad with a big hand of applause on this cold night. Actually, my watch says we've got three minutes to go. Shall we wait or not? <laughs> yeah. I want to get out here before I get lynched. Okay, so my background is um, polymer physicist without portfolio. The title, Indiscreet Music, is of course a troll on Brian Eno's Discrete Music and is itself a follow-up to Oblique Strategies Against Humanity, which I presented at EMF. Um, this is about nearly half new material, after which I shall uh, so to say, shut up and play the hits and repeat some of the stuff at EMF that at least I know people liked. So I'm Augeus on Twitter. The links to my slide share will be on every slide. Little that's the housekeeping. And here we go. So the prologue. Um, back in the day, I was a child of the 80s, and I was raised on the sort of um, mathematical recreation books you could buy, particularly those of uh, Cliff Pickover and um, the compendiums of the Scientific American Computer Recreations column. And they, they, they were different from what you can get today. You were sort of, there were pseudocodes. You were encouraged to actually mess around with things and sort of code things up and experiment for yourself and not wishing to be all soggy with nostalgia because it was terrible because all you had to play with, if you were lucky, was a sort of 8 megahertz Atari ST. And the thought of, the thought of playing with uh, signal processing in, in real time was, you know, was just a dream. I could, uh, I could play MP3s on my Atari Falcon in mono if I kept the mouse still. Um, these days, of course, you, 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 know, the, you don't see tomes like that, and apparently what the kids want is um, scorched pieces of laser-cut plywood with LEDs on them, and that's, that's what they want to do. So, a little bit more of background. I first became aware that um, computers and pictures and mathematics and sounds went together because of all things, Jeff Minter and his, uh, his light synthesizers, Tripatron, Color Space, Psychedelia, etc. And later, much later, I became aware of the, uh, the power electronics and the, and the noise scene. Now, this didn't impress me. Well, I, I liked it, but it didn't impress on, upon me in terms of sounds I wanted to make myself. But it did real, make me realize what I could get away with. Um, a really good description of... Uh, the noise scene can be had from Jennifer Wallace's Fight Your Own War on Head Press. And my own particular introduction to the noise scene was the Hinoima Club in Finsbury Park in London. Anyway, without further ado, let's start with something simple, very simple. Elementary one-dimensional cellular automata. So we have a set of, in fact, an array of, of cells which can be in, in this instance, two states, on or off. And as is fairly traditional, we shall start with a single on state, a single defect in the center. And if you imagine an image, the image will evolve down the page with the y-axis representing time. So a cell's future depends on its past and the pasts of its neighbors. There are eight possible arrangements of uh, live or, or dead cells. Thus, there are two cubed equals eight previous configurations for each cell. For each of those configurations, there's a single choice of will, will the cell be on or off. So there are two to the eight is 256 possible 1D cellular automata, um, some of which will be inverses or reflections, however. And that is, that is attributed to that, that name, that numbering scheme is attributed to one Stephen Wolfram of Mathematica fame. 
Now I'm going to briefly... No, I'm not actually. I'm going to go back to the... Go back to the slides and... So, rule 30. You can make a sort of tolerably not very good random number generator out of that. Rule 110, more of the, the uses and abuses of that later as well. So that's what, these, that's what these things look like in a nice fetching green. And I just wanted to know what they could potentially sound like. Admittedly, so did Stephen Wolfram. So you can, you can find online his Wolfram tones. Uh, it's an attempt to sonify these, these, these very simple rules. And what's, what's happened is that a narrow strip of cellular automata is taken, and if a cell is on or off, that corresponds to a note, or at least um, a, a, a percussion part. So different, different uh, columns of cells will correspond to different notes, or rather, yeah, different notes. Uh, this is tricky. Where's I? That probably says Wolfram tones. Well, that was nice. So much for the support act. Let's try something a little more fundamental and simpler, faster yet slower. Now, the problem with that was that, well, if it's, you've only got that strip of, of um, cells each one corresponding to a particular note. Well, that's not very many notes. So you could have a wider strip of cells, and much as I'm a fan of the genre known as black midi, do you really want all 88 keys on a piano mashed down by these, these cells all at once? So possibly not. So could we get a, a bigger range of notes with, with this small strip of cells? So first thing, we can actually have more than one cellular automata going, not at a time, but we can have something of almost approaching verses. So rule 75, 45, 30, etc. You'll notice that coming in, the two rules on the left are the mirror of the two rules on the right. In fact, the three rules on the left are the mirror of the three rules on the right, and the two in the middle are symmetrical. There's something bordering on, on structure there. So eight rules, each gets 64 beats. And this time, now the, the five cells in the center are dealt with in the sort of traditional manner. Again, there's some symmetry there, though. So we'll have open and closed hat on the outside, high tom and low tom further in, and then in the middle, we'll have the kick drum. But the melody, <laughs> the melody if you want to call it that, what we'll do is look at the history of the cells, in fact, the previous six generations. And we'll consider those as binary values. We'll have most significant bit in the present and the least significant bit in the future. And that'll have a little more variation in, in the notes played. So three notes polyphony for the three cells in the middle. Zero to 63, so three lots of 64 potential notes corresponding to the lower register of the 0 to 127 possible MIDI notes, the middle and the top end. All done nicely with the, with the Python Mido library, to which, for which I'm reasonably eternally grateful. We'll have a Volker beats doing the drums, and not the Volker keys as pictured. We'll have a, a Volker FM, which is a, a digital device playing the melody. If I'd have got over my... Uh, analog obsession earlier, I could have had a nice uh, novation circuit and had five note polyphony, one for each finger. So let's see what this sounds like. Find the mouse. Ooh, elementary CA dot flack. Righty clicky, oh come on.
Who won that one, do you think? Oh, thank you. Too kind. There are still problems there for me in that I chose the drum sounds and chose the sort of electric bass of, the, uh, of, the, of my Volker FM until it sounded nice. That's yielding too much of, of the sound to me and not enough to the, to the mathematics, to the algorithm. You've got to, give the, you've got to give the algorithm a fair chance at sounding terrible. So could I possibly yield control of the very timbre of the sound, in fact, do away with notes altogether, yield control over, over the number of even oscillators or whether we even had any sort of identifiable, identifiable oscillators to the system? Well, maybe. However, brief digression. That's a Gauss map. What should it sound like? More to the point, what even is a Gauss map? So, um, interestingly, the, the image on this T-shirt, yes, I am wearing the man's T-shirt at the gig, and the image on the first slide, when I did some of this at EMF, I was actually surprised how that, you know, there were people who didn't recognize it. So if I'm preaching to the converted about Feigenbaum diagrams and bifurcation, I apologize. But recurrence relation, take a, a value, x at time t plus 1 is a function of x at time t, and two parameters, alpha and beta. So for any alpha and beta, we create a sequence of x values, and we chuck away the transients, and we keep going, and various things can happen. It can collapse to zero. It can reach a steady state, two steady states, oscillation between the two, four, period four impli implies chaos, etc., etc. Michael Feigenbaum. And we do that, and we build up this series. And what we can do with this, this series of values is to build a histogram. So each of those slices through the bifurcation diagram, through the Gauss map, is a histogram. So bright means that point was visited lots, that value of that, that range of x values was visited lots of times, black means the system never went there. So we scan beta across the horizontal axis, and we can scan alpha through time and watch the thing evolve. And I thought to myself, well, how could, I make the, how could I get this to make sounds? I'm going to imagine that those slices, those histograms, are in fact spectra. So if you imagine your amusing t-shirt with your um, equalizer bar graph LED display, we're going to do that backwards. Problem number one is that my histogram is full of real values and the inverse Fourier transform required to turn it back into signal has, requires complex values. Well, there's, I've got no imaginary part. Am I bothered? Actually, no. If I have zero or constant imaginary part, I have zero or constant phase, and all that, the only constraint is that my signal will be symmetrical about the middle. So what? Um, I'm really not explaining the Cooley Tukey fast Fourier transform algorithm at this time of night to you lot at this time of night, but do look it up. It's quite nice. So, problem the second, the idea of a Fourier transform is that a periodic signal, or one that you've at least repeatedly copied till it looks periodic, produces a spectrum. Therefore, a spectrum should produce a periodic signal. We've already decided that our, our histogram, our spectra are going to be varying through time, so you cheat slightly. So you have the short time inverse Fourier transform. So you take your chunk of uh, spectrum for that slice of the bifurcation diagram, inverse Fourier transform it, multiply it by uh, what is called a window function, which uh, isn't Gaussian, but looks a bit like one, I believe. Blackman-Harris is the, the name of the function I used. and um, I've got a horrible feeling I've left out a convolution here somewhere, but never mind, I don't care at this time of night. So, we take our uh, chunks of signal, we multiply it by these window functions, and we overlap them, and we add them together, and eventually we get noises. 
thinking about it, the only sort of sense of time here was in the recurrence relation. But when we've got that histogram, all that's all over. So we're going to vary this beta parameter back and forth as we scan up and down our diagram whilst alpha is uh, increasing in time. Well, if beta's going backwards and forwards, why shouldn't, why shouldn't alpha? So in the right channel, we'll have the whole rigmarole only played backwards. I got that idea by reading my kickstarted copy of, um, of uh, Daphne Oram's individual note in a place of ultimate uh, vitreous China seclusion. But you can read of Daphne Oram on UberWeb. And while we're at it, if you uh, imagine the, the bifurcation diagram, splitting, recombining, becoming noise, we'll take, the, we'll take its center of mass, if you like, and use that to pan between the left and the right. So the idea is we'll start off with a single tone, chirped, ooh, becoming two, and having beat frequencies, ooh, and eventually turning into skronk, to use the technical term, and then coming back again. Now, I hasten to add, this work should not at all be compared to that of Elaine Radig, but if you're prepared, as I am, to listen to hours of her slowly evolving um, modular analog tones and, and studies on a plane, then you will be prepared for the, the desolation you are about to hear. It lasts for four minutes, not four hours at least. So this will be a little bit meditative. Maybe it's what you need on this, on this balmy evening. And tell a lie, this, this, this of course has pictures to go with it. So I'll just enable the slightly cheesy tape echo on my digital effects unit. And I'll play this and then I'll shut up.
Oh, thank you. I'll uh, get rid of that. Yeah, with, with regards to the uh, the function, the, the role of time in that, I forgot to get a, get a decent in joke in, and that's that equation wise, we should consider time as officially ended. Um, that, in fact, is culled from Sun Ra's space and the place. Sorry, space is the place, uh, which, uh, well, as a, as a polymer physicist, I recommend you go and see Space is the Place by Sun Ra on UberWeb at your earliest convenience. That was a public service announcement. So, all of a sudden, the inverse short time Fourier transform becomes my favorite new toy. And let's think back to those, uh, those cellular automata, and can we really have 88 cells acting as keys on the piano? Well, no, we can't have that, but what we shall have instead is individual bits of array in an inverse Fourier transform. So, 512 cells this time. Um, oh, I left out the zero padding. You're going to have to zero pad your arrays, otherwise you'll end up sounding like a dog whistle and your housemate will not be impressed. <laughs> Somebody remembers that. I hadn't got it quite right. What's that? Eee! Is there a mosquito? Eee! It's very loud. Ow! <laughs> My hearing's long been destroyed by Merzbo, so I was oblivious. So, single defect, we'll take the six previous uh, states of all the cells, interpret them as binary values, treat those binary values, that array of binary values, as a spectrum. We'll go for rule 30 on the left channel, rule 86, which is the reflection of rule 30 as the right channel. Um, the results are going to be a little bit uncompromising. I like them. Um, there is no one, no one has heard these sounds except for people wearing this T-shirt. Um, none of us, and, and we too, have not heard these at sufficient volume. Now, again, I'm, I'm not going to compare my work to Elaine Radig. I'm not going to compare my work to that of Merzbo either. But if you can stand an entire Merzbo gig, then you'll be all right with this. Otherwise, there, there are no guarantees. Um, I must say, do, re do read Fight Your Own War by, uh, by Miss Wallace if, if you can. I must say, though, I'm, I'm no longer particularly interested in the, some of the nihilistic uh, aspects of the, the power electronics or the, or the, or the power noise scenes. Um, so I, I, have, I feel no particular urge to acquire a balaclava get a silly name like a duodenal abuse unit and sit with my arms folded glowering at a row of guitar, effect, guitar effects pedals which I refuse to touch or alter because, hey, uh, harsh noise wall progression is for losers. Um, yeah, do look up Harsh Noise Wally, uh, a, uh, a satire on the harsh no noise wall scene and an actual legitimate use of uh, Scott Adams cartoons. It can happen. Uh, brace yourself. Oh, no, don't want to do that. No, I will do that now. Thanks, for the, thanks to the AV people, by the way, for getting audio and uh, video that worked pretty quickly. Um, have you got gaffer tape? Have you got a fire extinguisher? Most, have you got a digit on, um, on a on a slider somewhere. This is going to last three minutes and ten seconds, and I'm not going to stop it. I'm probably not going to start it either until I can find my mouse. Ah, yes, rule 3086.flack. It's a catchy tune, catchy title, rather. Brace yourselves. Oop, no. <laughs> Just teasing you. Earplugs, brace yourselves.
Now, that to me is what Rule 30 sounds like, and that to me is what Rule 30 looks like. It doesn't look like a piddling little column of uh, five or, or maybe a dozen, a dozen cells. Um, how remiss of me, I forgot to be nasty to Stephen Wolfram. Before we, before we leave uh, Cellular Automata, I did say Rule 110 was interesting. It's been proven that Rule 110 is universal. That is to say, if you can find a suitable way of encoding any, uh, any computational problem and you have a large enough uh, array of cells, you can encode a problem and interpret the answer in terms of an initial state of uh, rule 110, and you can run rule 110 and get the answer. And that was a proof that uh, I'm not going to explain cyclic tag systems at this time of night. Frankly, I, I couldn't explain cyclic tag systems at 10 in the morning with a big strong cup of, you know, pot of coffee either, to be honest. But that proof was um, not developed by Stephen Wolfram, but Wolfram Research said that its existence was a trade secret. If you go on my slide share, the URL will be, uh, there is a URL which is a link to um, a review of Wolfram's rather immodest tome, A New Kind of Science. Also, some wag has gone and implemented rule 110 in pure CSS, not one nasty line of JavaScript. So, officially, CSS is Turing complete. That wasn't me. You don't have to clap that. I said I'd shut up and play the hits. So, again, People, I, I saw people EMF, I'm about 50-50, go, oh, is that licit juice? No, it's a Lorentz attractor already. So back in 1963, this is like the sort of uh, apocryphal Newton apple on, on head moment. Edward Lorentz, deterministic non-periodic flow, you can find a PDF somewhere, set of three differential equations, simplified models of convection currents, and what he does is apocryphally, possibly true, he stops his simulation, restarts it uh, you know, after lunch or whatever, having made a couple of little rounding errors in the, uh, when entering back the, into the, the state of the, the, entering back the state of the system because you can't solve these uh, Analytically, you have to have you have to have you know, use numerical methods, and it behaves in a completely different fashion. So, two very very slightly uh, differing initial conditions, and the system diverges and stops looping around the complete op other lobe. Butterflies, yada yada yada. I'm, I'm I'm sure. Well, maybe more than half of you know. You know, this is this is not news. And I wanted to make some noises. Again, a sort of manifesto of mine. As many parameters of the mathematical system should be as possible should be making the decisions about what the, about what the, the sounds are. Minimize your own influence. It wasn't me. Give the, give the system a fair chance to sound terrible. And it should sound the way it looks. So. Quite, quite pedestrian compared to the uh, abuse of uh, Fourier transforms. We'll just have the, the three variables model, um, modifying the frequencies of uh, a bunch of, in this, in, in this first instance, actually sinusoidal uh, oscillators. And we'll have other oscillate, o oscillators modulating those themselves, controlled by the variables of the strange attractor, etc. And just for a laugh, we'll have stereo panning on the x variable. Now, how to implement this? I did not use Chuck. I did not use Super Collider at first. I did not use Arda. I did not use Pure Data. I only had to go. Oh, wrong slide, actually. Before I resigned myself to doing this in software, I must. I'm actually, actually stressed. I never wanted a modular synth. Please believe me. Um, when you're at evil physicist school, you get taught how to model, uh, 
analog circuits in terms of differential equations. Therefore, a differential equation can be turned back into an analog circuit. And this is Mr. Horowitz of um, Horowitz and Hill Art of Electronics fame and his Lorentz attractor circuit. You want to build one at home, the analog four quadrant multipliers he specifies are 20 quid a pop. I paid six quid for mine. Just you know, if you want to build one yourself, don't, you know, can be cheaper. It's almost too simple, isn't it? Um, it does work. So th there are problems if you want to the way it is at the moment, if you want to change the speed of the thing, you've got a big nasty rotary switch and uh, three sets of four caps to change the, the speed of the integration. I need to mess around with dual transconductance uh, amplifiers to get, the, uh, to get the chaoticness of the system controlled by a control voltage as well. So that, that was taking time. So back to software again, not Chuck, not pure data. Anybody guess? JavaScript. Web Audio API. Heard about this, in fact, because of... I'm completely not seeing the... How are we doing OK for time? How long left? 10 minutes. Of the original 45, OK, well, speed run then. Where's my browser? Now this is going to be a game. Uh, can we have the laptop audio back? Oh dear. Hang on. Belt and braces. Let's just see if it's me or you. So what, sorry? I wonder if it's chrome, chromium being foolish. want to advertise Google. Sound card. Right, improvisation. I can't believe I'm doing this. Yeah, I'm using my ruddy phone. Let's try something a bit different. Of course, I actually need to change the bloody buttons on the mobile browser, don't I? 
Let's have a Chura tractor instead. If we want to talk about fail, um, I also completely failed to build a, a Chura circuit at camp. Never mind. So that was a nice little stopgap at least. don't know why this ruddy Dak has stopped playing ball. I really don't. Maybe it's the... Ah. Can we turn that down, please? Because that'll be helpful for later. Ah. Uh. Cambridge Audio, Dak Magic, don't buy one. So that was a nice little stop gap. Next thing I tried, closure of all things. So I didn't want to use Super Collider directly, so I tried to, uh, well, just domain specific language, I'd rather not. So closure has a project called Overtone, which I believe, in look, looking at Git, has uh, just acquired a new maintainer, which is nice. And I'd hope to get, um, hope to get uh, my Lorenzo Tractor impl implementation controlling, cl controlling uh, super gliders, oscillators, and try as I might, I just couldn't get it happening in real time. It was all horrible and, and, and steppy, worse than the JavaScript. So I ended up, uh, ended up just building a, a buffer full of uh, Lorentz signal and, and using that. It was, it was a little more, I guess, continuous and non-steppy than, uh, than the JavaScript, but not much. And so in the end, I relented. Oh, all right, I do slightly want a modular synth. So I, I Finish messing around with my uh, with my Lorentz circuit. Normalize the voltages from 0 to 5 with op amps. Five minutes, thank you. So 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 things didn't get fried, and we'll have a little mini modular synth called a nano synth. The patching is all done by uh, by uh, PCB headers, which are perhaps not very durable, but at least you don't need to sell a kidney to have one. So we'll have one variable controlling pitch, one variable controlling the pulse width of uh, your square wave. We'll have something approaching, not, not so much panning, but we'll have uh, the VCAs on two synths being turned up and down according to the, uh, the exposition. And Moogwerkstatt, variables controlling pitch, LFO rate, and filter cutoff, as is traditional. Little snippet of that. I tried to, uh, this was recorded at EMF, but of course, it wasn't played live at EMF, and I wasted quite a bit of time staring at the circuit board in disbelief and swearing. Now, all I've got to do is work out. Yeah, I've worked that nanosynth. There's also a bit of noise here to get a nice whooshing effect as the thing winds from side to side. Uh, didn't open that. Come on. Oh, I opened it with bloody Amarok. No. So, turning it faster and slower on the little rotary switch to switch in and out the three banks of capacitors. Not what I wanted at all, really. Enough of that, nearly there. I'm gonna play you out fairly shortly with, well, in, when I abused Fourier, Fourier transforms and the uh, 1D cellular automata, that was a continuous system abused and uh, 
sorry, a, a discrete system abused and made continuous. So now, as threatened, I finally threw in the towel and did what I thought would be awful. All right, so I quite, haven't quite got the definitive analog Lorentz sounds I wanted. So I threw in the towel and said, oh, all right, I'm just going to have to quantize the, uh, quantize the system to the 120, not to 127 MIDI notes. So X variable playing an Arturia microbrute, Y and Z variable playing the notes on a Volker keys, X variable, however, also controlling the filter on the Volca itself also quantized to 127. Every time the X axis, uh, or rather the, uh, the Z axis is crossed by the X variable, we'll have um, a kick drum triggered on the Volca beats. And yeah, it's going to be all quantized and steppy and not very good. So we'll just turn up the portamento and hope for the best. My uh, my expectations were not high.
all gone quiet. Well, what do I know? I thought that was going to be horrible. Um, it turns out that uh, real live musicians who I, who I respect and are, have been sadly rent from their homes because of the actions of our Prime Minister when she was Home Secretary actually quite liked it. Um, as to why I keep using um, external gear rather than software since. I, I did that just, just because I did, all right. Um, also, obviously, hell is other people's software. Um, I do appreciate that um, music hardware isn't always cheap, but w one, a, a, one trick around the, you know, the, the cost of, um, of musical hardware is not to um, try not to detonate your currency because uh, straight bananas and energy-saving light bulbs give you a bad feel. Thank you. Any questions or abuse or runaway screaming? There's still an audience here. Thank you very much for this amazing talk. This was definitely something different. Uh, oh, it's that all right. Especially, no, the music was really, um, mm. it's my favorite talk today, definitely. I love that. So do we have any more questions, or do we have any questions regarding, I don't know, the music, uh, the math, perhaps it was a little late for that, but do we have any questions here? What you can do is, uh, if you want to find me later, I'll be in the vicinity of Milliways, and if you've been partaking of its entertainment, hospitality, and libations, you better go and uh, buy, a, buy a Milliways challenge coin. That's the <laughs> commercial break. <laughs> so, we don't want them to okay. fly, wasting away. Are you, everyone's stunned. Oh, there's someone actually approaching a mic. No, that's just the sound guy getting his <laughs> earplugs. No, he has a question. So, go on. Yeah, um, I'm actually studying physics, and I just had a, a course on uh, digital signal processing. You know more than me. And what we did there was we did a Fourier transform of some sound and afterwards, um, sorry, I'm just trying to turn this off in the meanwhile. Um, afterwards, uh, we had to do certain things here. Like, uh, first thing we did was we um, normalized it. So we threw away all the amplitude information and we noticed that that way the sound was still recognizable. You could still understand what was being said on the recording. Um, but when you threw away all the face information and made it completely real, it turns into like a blur of noise. So have you tried experimenting with actually generating complex um, stuff? Not yet. I mean, the, if you can think of a way, I mean, the, it trouble. Uh, uh, it troubled me for a while, and I, I resisted doing that just because I thought, well, where's the, where's the phase going to come from? Um, well, you described the, the results as just sort of sludgy noise. Um, <laughs> like, I care about if I get sludgy noise. I mean, that was a, it's a good point, though. I mean, if I, I'm looking around, trying to, you know, if you can think of a physical system that obligingly produces... Um, Arrays of you know streams of uh, streams of arrays of complex values that uh, could be uh, visualized and uh, sonified at the same time. That would be that would be good. So I'm I'm looking out for one. I mean, mate, could you? I'm I'm wary of messing around with complex iteration maps because um, the one thing about cellular automata and those. Um, bifurcation maps, this is a natural sense of time through the thing. So I guess if you could take slices and scans through um, through you know, Julia set or something, well, which direction? I mean, I suppose you, know, you could go on axis. Uh, but is that really how, um, how you perceive the thing when looking at it? And that sort of violates my own stupid self-imposed rule of the thing needs to look like the way it sounds. I mean, it, it sounds like you... If I don't, if if I've got that uh, silly self-imposed mental block, and you haven't, then you you go away and do it with, with my with my blessing, of course. I should uh, uh, maybe I should start looking at real oblique strategies cars instead of my own my own mistakes. But yeah, quite right. Good point. Does well, that answer your question? Or yes, it does. Thank but you. When you just said it, 
I thought of an answer. Couldn't you walk through, uh, for example, some complex fractal and choose your sampling point based on the result of the Lorentz equation? You could. I mean, for me, that sort of... Uh, again, it's my own mental block about these... Uh, these things sort of exist in their own ascetic, isolated universes. Um, so y you have go go and do it. I mean, I, I might get round to it, but you uh, you ig ignore the sort of restricted old old git and do your own, please. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll get over myself and my my asceticism, but possibly not. <laughs> So it seems we don't have any more questions at the moment. So I would to like to thank you again for this amazing talk and uh, please give a big round of applause for Giles.